okay so guys today's topic actually we are going to learn about xss this is what i have learned so far and uh, uh, i'm still uh, still not quite uh, um, good at xss myself but uh, i thought that uh, i have learned uh, very good things and which i was not known before so this also helped me to uh, bypass cloudflare to find a bypass of the cloudflare as well uh, the uh, the material which i was reading and uh, now uh, i was i want to share this with you so this stream is regarding that okay uh, are you able to hear my voice everyone yes 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 it's clear okay and guys i want it to be interactive okay you can ask me question anytime in the in between and uh, we can clear it out at that time okay it's here see okay so uh, we are going to uh, hack on this uh, barker barkersocial.com uh, actually it is a lab uh, which is provided by uh, bugbountyhunter.com you might already know um, this is uh, training platform you might already know uh, him and uh, this is his training platform and at here we have a very realistic uh, website means the bugs which zishino discovered during his uh, all his experience in the bug bounty um, he has installed all those means he has uh, personally coded all those <laughs> bugs in this uh, lab so it's almost very realistic we are going to hunt on this and uh, i will uh, give you a few tips on xss and uh, hopefully you you will be also able to find <laughs> so i have not formatted the session fully but uh, since i told already this will be a stream not a youtube uh, video but uh, many people were not able to join so we will also record it for them and i thought that yeah we can also put it in like maybe a stream uh maybe a stream play playlist we can do it uh, once in a week maybe and uh, the things i learn then i can share with you so youtube is also great for that so we are going to record okay so lots of talking is been done <laughs> sorry for that uh let's start uh, the our topic for today is uh, xss and the methodology you can apply it on the live website okay uh for that uh the pre requested knowledge obviously you should know what is xss if you are not aware about it then you should definitely check it out uh, you can just search it out on xss and uh, go to was or portugal labs and uh, see what piece is but in short this it is a well known web vulnerability where an attacker is uh, able to execute javascript on the victim side okay so it just does it's not fully the full send uh, definition but uh, you can learn it from here okay so definitely check it out quotes figure one uh, it's great you can also check it out oas bottom now the first thing which uh, we are going to learn uh, is probing for accesses means how do you test for access okay let uh, let me ask the first question to you guys like how do you start testing accesses means what is the first step that you do to test uh, for the accesses so we can insert some html tags in search bars yeah okay and uh, looking up for the for reflection uh one person please yeah uh looking up for the reflections that are displayed in a website okay uh anyone other who was speaking uh we will look for the input fields available yeah okay so if we will look for input fields which are reflected right 
in the source code. So what about others? Who are there with us? A lot of them, 30 people. And I was able to only hear here from just four people, I guess. Someone also messaged me on Discord, I guess. Oh, let me check here. Okay, uh, till then I can uh, answer your questions till they come. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm seeing checking for input and how it's reflected in source code. Okay, uh, check JS endpoints. Uh, yeah, we will come to that part. And uh, how website is encoding for bypasses. And uh, yeah, we can, we can see that, uh, yeah, that is also true. When we are looking for filters, yeah. Uh, put something like this in parameter and check which character are and yeah, obviously. Okay, read JS files line by line. Um, actually, you can also get uh, accesses without reading JS file, obviously, but JS files helps a lot <clears throat> when you want to discover some hidden uh, accesses. And also uh, making payload means for uh, building payload, you can use even CSS file to uh, build a payload. Okay, we will come to that part uh, in the further. So yeah, um, were they able to join? Uh, let me check. Um, Okay, cool. Mm. Okay, so uh, let's move. So for probing for the accesses, the one which uh, which is one of the most well uh, another question. Let me ask another question, <laughs> which is one of the most important character for an accesses payload. One character. It is, it is one character. Okay. Which is one of the most important character? One. Uh, no, it's not a quote, not a single quote. <laughs> there are only four options. So one by one, everyone with a, yeah. <laughs> angle brackets, yeah. Thus, uh, less than angle bracket. Uh, Viraj uh, said it. So yeah. But it is not necessary actually because when you are uh, uh, when you are testing for DOM uh, DOM accesses or your input is getting reflected in uh, JS, uh, then you don't require the angle brackets. But uh, other than that, you might require uh, the angle bracket. Means it's uh, what we say. It depends on the website, obviously. But most of the time, you will require an uh, Greater than angle bracket, greater than less than. I always get confused in that. So, the first thing that you should do whenever you find any input field, obviously, and just open your inspect element because all checking source code is one thing, but you can also check uh, it in the inspect element and you will see the difference. Uh, I will show you what is the difference you can check in inspect element as well as in the source. So whenever you see something <clears throat> input field, you need to uh, have means you can make your own uh, own what we say a string which you, you which you can use for accessing. What do I mean by that? Uh, that is we can use annotation. Okay. So whenever you see you uh, whenever you see any input field. First thing you should do is uh, use your probing access string. Uh, for example, uh, something like uh, a cat or anything. I will use this in between and uh, one or something like that. Okay, let me explain it. So cat is nothing, just uh, some different word which might not available 
which might not available in the whole source code it should be something unique which should not be seen anywhere in the source code so that you can easily find out uh, where your reflection is okay and the server string is let me right here okay this is our angle bracket so that we can check uh, if uh, it get reflect as it is okay and then one is nothing but uh, to see if uh, it checks any like uh, uh, what do we say if it uh, helps to start any tag okay so basic xss tag you will see all around is something like this there will be a tag okay then there will be an event handler so i will just type it an event handler and the other thing will be code the code will be javascript code okay this is javascript code java script code okay what is the you can use notepad <laughs> yeah what i was thinking it uh, it's pretty cool to write this <laughs> Okay, let me use the notepad only. Uh, annotation, stop it, and uh, note. I was going to use notepad, then I thought that I can use the annotations. Okay, so we can call it as a beacon. Uh, this is our beacon. So this and this. Are you able to see the font size or should I increase it? Okay, is it visible? So most of WAF will uh, think that this is nothing harmful in here. And you will be also able to test if uh, the reflection is as it is. Okay, now after you get this string reflected as it is, the next step would be to check if you can import the single code or double code. They are not necessary as you might have seen a uh, payload like this on load uh, alert one okay you you only saw this and uh, this payload will also work as you may know so we didn't check for single quote or double quote or uh, closing bracket now i'm moving to that part why we didn't require the closing bracket here because uh, you can also close or comment out the rest of the code which uh, uh, with this uh, double slash or or you can use also this so this will comment out whole code okay let me show you demo first thing uh, whenever you see input tag first add your beacon okay we are going to add our beacon uh, let's say test.com we are going to use what test.com and uh, we are inputting all of our beacons here. We are going directly going to use this. So I don't. Sorry, 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 sorry. I have to do this in Bob. I forgot. <laughs> okay. Let it start. Uh, you guys have questions? Anything related to this up till now? Okay. Simply, I do know because when you are testing or uh, you need to also uh, get Google in the request so uh, just uh, do no and uh, in the option do this so that uh, you can on off uh, whenever you want we need to use this script for payload in all the input field correct 
yeah you can use a simple string as well like uh, you can also set uh, your uh, match and replace here that whenever you uh, like for example uh, in the parameter value request parameter value if if find xss then replace it with your payload like a svg or something like that and uh, you just need to simply put your beacon in here uh, xss and it will just replace it with that okay you can also do this trick as well uh, but uh, that uh, that is when you are testing in the mass like uh, you are testing a larger target and uh, you need to automate something or that that trick i leave it up to you and uh, at the end i think i will also uh, share uh, uh, mass hunting trick which is already known <laughs> you guys already know that uh, is there any difference in checking for reflection between view source content yeah obviously there is a uh, difference i will show it to you uh, what is the difference between checking view source code and inspect element uh, let me just register it first Uh, I was going to use up. <sighs> I don't use much of extension as you can see <clears throat> because most of my work is already done with the flow uh, match and replace. <laughs> I even don't go to target site map. I just simply check uh, the history here. <laughs> uh, history, HTTP history is the most used tab here in the proxy, most used feature. Obviously match and replace other. And uh, flow, flow is also good. When I want to check something, uh, when I want to search for something, then I simply use flow because I think so logger plus plus they have integrated in Bob community, but uh, we can't search here anything as it is only available to pro version. So you can directly use the uh, yeah, this uh, flow for that mm. and other extenders that i use are turbo intruder obviously for uh, fast uh, if you want fast intruders then you can use turbo intruder in community edition okay pro version already is uh, fast with the threading and all uh, then hunt scanner hunt scanner simply will tell me that which parameter is uh, most vulnerable to which uh, uh, which vulnerability so it will hint me that uh to do list is something which i was testing for one friend this is one plugin uh, which uh, one of my friend was uh, trying to build uh it's just simple a uh, checklist uh, checklist tool you can also put your custom checklist in it bypass buff i didn't use it i don't know why it is here uh, it works in i think so pro version only Authorize obviously to testing for authorizations issues. Easy CSRF for uh, uh, building CSRF, uh, sorry, for scanning for CSRF, but I don't use it because it's very noisy. Um, I simply turn it off. Uh, then there is this CSRF POC creator, which, I uh, which you can use for creating uh, CSRF POCs uh, in the community version. Uh, so I have covered this in the video, I guess, on the CSR, which I, which you can check it out on the YouTube channel. Copy as Python so that I can copy the request uh, for the Python tools. Auto repeater, uh, obviously, similar to authorization issues, uh, author, authorize, but uh, little bit advanced. Uh, I simply use it for idors, actually. Then Hackventer. For XSS, yeah, we can on this. Additional is I was just testing, I guess. Uh, this thing also doesn't work, I guess, in the community version. Nah, I was uh, I didn't test it. This sharpener, this also doesn't work here in community. Uh, Rio is another plugin by my friend. Yeah, we are going to use this get all param, which I uh, I think so I covered. Uh, I covered in uh, my blog, the parameter discovery one. 
then this was the one which I was developing. The project, it's uh, not yet ready. Uh, then uh, this one is InQL, GraphQL for GraphQL scanning. And uh, this is for uh, SQL. Okay. So uh, we are going to use this Hackventer and uh, get all params for XSS today. Also there would be something, yeah, Trishul. Trishul is awesome. You can check it out here. You can basically get scanner feature in community edition. It will scan for XSS, SQLi, SSTI, a uh, similar way as in uh, scanner does. <laughs> so it is great. But uh, um, there are not much uh, thing it has. It just has some payloads built in that it just uh, put in the inputs that we pass and it will alert us here that there is an XSS, SQL, IOSS. Possibilities, okay. Possibilities, not confirmed, possibilities. Okay. So a <laughs> lot of time wasted in uh, extensions. Hopefully you might have got something new. Uh, that will pop it, yeah. Okay, uh, let's begin. Uh, whenever you see your test, uh, like whenever you are importing, you can directly put something like this, but uh, there is a reject, uh, reject check here. So I haven't, Put anything here, but let's uh, let's uh, test. Yeah, but uh, this field I think so it doesn't reflect anywhere, so this might not work actually. But still, just to show you guys because I have already tested that I think so. Then pin also doesn't work because uh, there is a regex here as well that checks for numbers. I, but you guys have to test every field, okay? You can also use the blind XSS uh, payload in here, in the password, you can use that. Uh, then you can use this as well. We are going to put here our string, which is this. I could have simply wrote that. <laughs> Here's the name of this. And appearance. We are going to put this as well here. Let's simply copy this. Bye. Uh, anyone said anything? Okay, there is something. As you can see here, please enter a valid email address. So we need a valid email address. So this doesn't work. So we need to use this. <laughs> Copy, paste, register. Also, sometimes what happens now, he is just uh, checking for uh, on the Client side means uh, it just checks here. But what if you edit that request there? Okay. Please choose a unique username. It is unique, I guess. We are registered or what? What was the request? Yeah, okay, let me check. Now again. And let's do two then. I think so. We have registered with that uh, username, I guess. I haven't tested that. This is two. Okay, the username may contain only letters and numbers. Yeah, only letters and numbers. So <laughs> we can't use this. So this way you can check. Uh, but we what we will do is we will uh, replace that during our interception. So this post request is going to the repeater. 
And this is yeah. okay. Let's send it. Follow the redirection. Render it. It will show throw an error, I guess. Yeah, username must contain. So the username is somewhere here. Uh, the username, yeah. So we can't use any characters here. Okay, so we are going. Okay, so we were talking about the probing string, uh, probing, probing string actually, which you can call beacon. Uh, so our beacon is this. So now I think so we have uh, been successfully registered. Uh, so let's try login in and uh, see anything got reflected or not. Uh, let's go to login page. Password is same. Okay, so what if I type something here? Back to the world. Uh, this is a social media site, you can say something like that. Okay. So as you can see here, this is our first string that we saw. So we will also open inspect element and uh, check it something here. So it's getting reflected as it is and let's check the source code. Also, we found that uh, this is the uh, input one, right? So we are also going to use this here. Uh, did you notice that I was changing the number here so that I can know that which was that field where the where the input was so sometimes what happens now uh, when you are testing for uh, this your string okay <clears throat> you can get confused that which was that param that uh, I inputted that so you need you can use uh, you can like uh, name the name the or number the parameter so if you have two parameters uh, write the angle bracket and then one and then on the second bracket angle bracket two so that you can know that okay this was the second param which uh, got reflected okay so let's see here okay now let me move this to there uh, where is that option side okay so it is as it is here and it is in the p tag and let's check the source code which was our string cat okay cat2 now cat2 owner cat2 so i uh, there is no string over that one i should have <laughs> i should have <laughs> made another string <laughs> okay so as you can see here the name here our profile name which is uh, this thing cat is getting and lt okay so it's getting filtered here what about other input field we are getting this as it is here so there might be possible accesses here lt here and uh, anywhere else no okay so we got to know that we can inject our XSS here uh, in this uh, div column, which is it profile cat and it, it is in href uh, href tag and uh, profile two and this is the name okay in the post body as you can see here three three was our post uh, it was our post one right so. Uh, there is some filter here as well but uh, we found that there is only one input field where our payload can go and that is this thing this is a code where our payload can go okay so now we need to know that how can we get out of this context so it's a simple pretty uh, uh, a attribute which has a herif as an attribute it is just the a tag so what we can do is uh, we can use this simply this to uh, get i think so out of the context so let's try uh, 
profile name I guess yeah where is my profile okay as you can see here there is also reflections here we just need to verify that uh, this was h3 and uh, just check the source code of his field as well cat underscore 2 so this one I think so this was a different one <clears throat> this thing again I think so this is a profile name right I think so yeah it is it is a profile name uh, then the next was this so it's the uh, same and the public post means this thing this is uh, this is there is a filter here as well okay so profile name is vulnerable might be vulnerable to access the display name sorry <clears throat> so next thing which i use is uh, try to exit from the tag and opening another tag okay the first tag you should not directly put uh, like s normally i would do svg because uh, it's not that uh, harmful but most of the payload use it so WAF can uh, detect that it is a harmful tag so simply use something like uh, image or uh, you can use like bold but bold will get uh, uh, not be seen like something or uh, the character is already bold our name so what we can do uh, I think so it was S S S HTML mm. yeah so what this s tag will do now he it will uh, uh, what do we say let me just show you this oh, add yourself run the code Uh, as you can see here there will be a line on the text text okay so it's pretty cool and uh, it's not a harmful text so we can simply use this one and uh, then we can write some maybe some line uh, which is also not available let's say uh, gmit let's say gmit and uh, close the tag also try without closing the tag okay so we will also try it in the description as well and update the profile you can directly also use this while probing so the first thing is uh, making your own uh, your own probing text okay so the first thing that you will need is uh, the first your probing text or you can say beacon you need to make your own personalized beacon the point that you should remember is uh, it should be unique it should be unique uh, that it is not available in the source code anywhere in the source code it should be unique it should be different next it should be minimal minimal okay and the next thing is optional but uh, uh, you can add something uh, numbers it should include numbers according according to parameters okay according to parameters so for example like uh, for example like uh, your uh, text and then your character and then uh, one and uh, uh, increasing uh, in the increasing order as you uh, as a parameter in the request okay so finalize beacon you can make something like this that should be not be for example you can get creative with it okay you can also like for example you can get creative with it like uh, you can uh, add some text let's say your name uh, your name might be somewhere else as well so maybe uh, it's not unique 
if it is unique then you can use it let's say natsu and then what i can do is i can do this as well as i can use its url formatting version so that you can also know that it is uh, doing single encoding or double encoding or not so you can do like a 25 22 i guess uh, 25 22 let me open the pop uh, which was that mm -hmm. decode as url decode as url okay so it's a quote yeah so what about uh, the bracket encode as url encode as url huh. so we can use a uh, quote we can use quote maybe so we can use something like this okay we are going to use this then quote but the quote might get blocked like uh, that the WAF will think that you are testing for SQLI so it will get blocked so I told it should be minimal okay so this is not this is harmless and uh, WAF will not block it and then you can uh, add your number which is 3 4 5 according to your parameter okay so this can be a beacon here what it will check it will check if the, the angle bracket is reflected as it is does it uh, support the dual and uh, dual decoding of the URL? Uh, simply you can use uh, 3C maybe. You can use percentage 3C and then the number of the parameter which you are testing. Okay, so this can be a beacon for you to get uh, know that okay this uh, is the parameter that I can test for accesses. <clears throat> so I think so we have. Uh, we have covered first part. Let's check first. Probing for XSS. Okay. Guys, uh, when did I got <laughs> when did I got disconnected? Hello. Yeah, we can hear you now. One minute ago, you got disconnected. Acha. <laughs> I I was speaking alone. I think to that. <laughs> okay, so our probing test. Our first step is uh, this thing. First, uh, prob probing for accesses. Our beacon string should be unique. It should not be available in the HTML anywhere. Uh, it should be minimal. Okay, and it should be okay. Uh, you can like this is the optional one. Uh, you can add the parameter number in it. So this is a minimal. Uh, you can also get creative with it and use uh, like your URL encoding in it so that you can know that uh, there is a URL encoding. Yeah, <laughs> Indian ISP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Indian ISP. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that we can't hear you okay uh, there is a lot of problem going on in stream first the internet gone add a lop yeah <laughs> so okay so probing for XSS uh, let me repeat it again <laughs> first step is probing for XSS which is you can use uh, make one beacon which is uh, creative uh, don't worry uh, the recording was uh, uh, getting recorded locally as well so you will be able to uh, check on this youtube as well so don't worry about it okay so the first thing uh, it should be unique okay and one second right? okay so the first thing should be it should be unique it should not be available in the html anywhere in the any in the source code it should be minimal uh, don't go uh, adding everything your payload or anything in that uh, simply you can use something similar to this or you can get little creative and add a url uh, encoded uh, angle bracket okay so you can add that as well and uh, this is optional you can add a parameter number so that you can know that this was uh, reflected in the first parameter 
this was reflected in the second parameter okay so this is an example string which i came up with uh, this is natsu this is the unique string which might not contain in the html uh, this is simple uh, angle bracket for testing if it is reflecting as it is and uh, this one is for checking if there is any url decoding and uh, that too no not for uh, bypassing the waf but uh, you can get to know yeah for bypassing waf yeah you can say that to get to know that there is a decoding in that you can add something like this 25 i guess uh, or checking any is there any dual uh, decoding you can get creative with it but i simply like to use something like this so that i can know that okay there is something you can add the will encode it single character something like that uh, like 25 22 which is for the dual code dual encoding of the piece and this is simply the number okay so you can use uh, beacon something similar to this the next step <laughs> i'm not going to explain now in the deep uh, because i think so we are going uh, very in depth uh, it should be but uh, we don't have much time so the next step is uh, once you have checked that okay it's getting reflected as it is the next step should be to check if what other characters are allowed okay check what other character are allowed so for example check for single encode double encode or you can check for this so i usually check for these things so i just simply copy it and uh, put it in here but uh, you can directly also start testing with uh, some unknown not uh, uh, very well known uh, tags html tags like the s tag which is simply nothing but uh, it will just create a uh, cancellation line on the text here uh, let me just do this and update the profile i will show you this so if i go to my go to my profile you will see that this thing here as you can see here gmail has been cancelled because we use the hashtag this thing okay so that means we can inject accesses here but we can't see anywhere else okay we can see also in the post here so we can inject an accesses here we have confirmed up till now that uh, we can inject uh we can inject Okay, let me add here and use harmless harmless tag HTML tag next step which is so uh, we you can use s tag you can use uh, any other like b tag maybe b tag or any other tag okay so I usually check for s so that uh, I get to know that this was the thing it, it is easy to find out that this was the reflected one okay okay so this is the second step use some harmless uh, html tag also include this but uh, since we were able to simply uh, simply use this tag that means that there is an access here okay now the next thing is check first thing is to check check normal payload okay the third thing is check for normal payloads most of the time WAF will block it or the native code is something that uh, will block that thing but uh, update it okay as you can see here the profile description format is invalid that means there might be some buff here right because the hashtag was working before but what about this thing let uh, let's send this okay so the profile name format is invalid okay so there is some kind of buff here right so the normal one will not work because the hashtag was working that means we can inject html now we are just testing for we if we can uh, inject any script or uh, javascript code here so 
check for normal payload script uh, script didn't work didn't work so what we will do we will uh, try uh, the next which is common which is svg okay svg on load uh, so first first will be uh, this thing here svg which is our tag now we will add a handler here handler okay that will be our okay let uh, me accept is there any setting that accept automatically i think so we need to set that before only right settings general nah i think so we can add it to uh, that only okay so we can test the next the common payload is uh, test how you can which is the tag which you can uh, by using which uh, you can achieve uh, any achieve accesses okay one which is well known is svg other is using uh, uh, src source if uh, uh, you can use source in the svg as well and in this also you can use these uh, maybe you can also use uh, other html tags you just need tag for which can uh, which accept some kind of uh, handler event handler you can also use a tag uh, you can also use uh, which is that tag i didn't remember i think so it was uh which was that i don't remember well <laughs> actually you don't even require the tag you know that yeah, i can just simply use gg and on load uh, let's say alert sometimes you don't even require tags uh that to be uh, this because it just for uh, confusing the waf okay but sometimes you need to uh, with like some uh, event handlers are that that require some tags okay so let's try with gg and uh, update the profile let's check the profile okay so gg was accept, uh, reflected here and uh, so i think so we were not still able i think so we need to use svg here uh, i didn't remember uh one which was uh, i wanted to show you that doesn't require the uh, tag uh, whatever tag we can use i think so that uh, i will show that in the what do we say the oh, okay oh, my plus one so let's use svg on load and normally use this payload every time but uh, you can use another as well so okay as we got accesses here as you can see here it got reflected so the script was not working but the svg was working one working okay uh, you can also use a tag and other tag as well okay now that uh, comes to our tag here on load was working okay on load was working but uh, what if it is not working so that comes to agnostic event okay agnostic events uh, handlers are those which uh, doesn't like uh, what we say uh, which doesn't uh, require any tags i guess yeah agnostic ones doesn't require any tag uh, let me show you mm, wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute where was it where was it let me tell you okay so the tag which i was wanna share with you uh, like the agnostic one which uh, doesn't require any tag so let's say my name Ka uh, kathan here which is obviously not a tag in <laughs> html anywhere <laughs> okay and uh, then we can use uh, the what we say property i guess ID table content ID table then I can use on load or 
uh, on blur or uh, something like that okay and also when you are testing now simply use some kind of sting here as well something it it can be anything okay because some event handler or some uh, uh, like on mouse okay on mouse over on mouse over i guess over yeah on mouse i guess which was a tag i didn't remember mm. yeah it was on mouse over yeah so some kind some event handlers like this on mouse over required some kind of tags where uh, the user when interact with uh, get accesses okay so as you can see here this is our tag <clears throat> this is uh, the uh, another tag actually in the html uh, let me show you this this is a global attribute okay this is this is a global attribute it doesn't uh, require any specific <coughs> tag, uh, tag so we can simply use this and uh, let me show you where was it let me update the profile okay now we use kathan as a tag <coughs> we use this global attribute content editable and then uh, event handler our javascript code some tags so that uh, we can interact with okay so whenever i will move to here okay it's not working i think so it's not working hmm but it uh, works actually if you can test your uh, xss playground i guess xss playground let me uh, from google i guess there was a google one na uh there was one playground by google uh, let me check it should be available here yeah this one so if i show you this and if we copy our payload which is this then you should still be able to see this xss was pop up because it uh, actually depend on the context so if we check the source code uh, where is it the tag was cut and right and okay someone is in yeah so as you can see here our payload got executed i think so and yeah so it's getting reflected at the seventh place yeah here it was uh, getting reflected as you can see here it doesn't check for the tag it directly go with the global attribute and then the oh yeah it, it didn't got reflected here sorry so as you can see here uh, kathan became a tag on a, on a content editable is an global attribute on mouse over is our event handler this is our javascript code and this is some tags which uh, using which we can interact right so uh, it is not necessary that you require the tags every time some some uh, some payloads or anything global global attribute so you can use this some kind of uh, global attribute and uh, like content editable as i show you this that doesn't check for any tag but uh, uh, you can execute uh, uh, it get uh, what we say uh, reflected in the dom uh, i mean work in the dom so you can use something like that some payload doesn't required anything so you can test that as well Uh, it is very helpful when uh, you are bypassing waf okay so uh, this kind of getting to know about this kind of uh, tags are really helpful so you can check this uh, global attribute here for the available tags 
next you can check title on load and all this okay okay we move to global attribute i was wanting to global as you can see a content editable is a global attribute so you can use assess key class adder data and all those but you need to identify how to use them okay so you can build a payload using that as well okay the next thing i think so we have tested the normal one now uh, we need to check for uh, uh, WAF one i think so uh, up till now any doubts do you have any doubts up till now if any let me know Do you have any doubts? Anywhere? Okay, let me show you that as well. Uh, this thing here only I will show you. Okay, I know. <laughs> Inspect element. Okay. If I move to here. I... Now if i use something like uh, this uh, what do we say uh, somewhere which was that payload i don't remember where uh, which was that which was that which was that uh, let me check the source code first uh, the source code is D1, okay, uh, HRA file. And uh, for example, yeah, we can use this thing. Something here. Yeah. As you can see here, uh, this was the difference which I wanted to show you. Uh, since you can see here in the, what we say, uh, in the source code, when I use the comment, whole code after this got commented out, right? You can see this green part, this is all commented out. But if you check in the inspect element here, uh, is it visible? The Kathan tag is still available here. And the code is still working here because the browser we have browser things that uh, these tags are being started here but it will close somewhere right so browser automatically closes the tags so uh, this is a difference uh, which you can say so where it can be helpful it can be helpful uh, when uh, you, you are bypassing waf and using the same code means for example uh, if there were it was getting uh, for example there was a script tag okay script tag here uh, besides the image source tag so i can simply if my uh, input is getting reflected here in the level one um, field here let's say my input is getting then i can just simply start a script tag here instead of uh, the script tag here so let me just uh, show you in the notepad so that you can get a better understanding for example our source code is this okay and uh, this is our input field suppose suppose this is our input field okay <laughs> don't think that uh, this is the input field. okay so suppose our input uh, there is script tag some script here in this so whenever uh, there is some input this script will exit uh, execute here okay now what if you start here you close it and you simply use uh, this script here okay you started the script now you enter your payload let's say alert one and you just don't close the script you just comment it out at using this so what will happen uh, the source code will whole get uh, commented out this thing everything will get commented out but browser will think that the script tag was started so browser will automatically add the script tag at the end so that way this kind of payload also works so let me show you i think so it will work uh here as well so let's add it here like this so 
delay 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 and uh, what i wanted to show you was this okay okay we the script like was not started properly alert why there was not alert okay so inspect element view source code uh okay yeah it will not work because there is no script uh, script here right there is no uh, script code script code script uh, script code should be on the same line it should be on the same line so after my input got uh, this after this there should be uh, some script here so then it will work but it's not working here uh, i think so uh, let's use another tag maybe a tag href and we can use the java script alert one maybe yeah and uh, we can close it and uh, yeah let's try this thing yeah mm. yeah as you can see here <laughs> everything it is not getting commented out i don't think so why it's not working but the browser should think that this thing here okay it's not getting out there mm -hmm. but you got my point right uh we need something similar to this like it should be on the same line then you can comment out whole and the browser will add uh, something so that should be i think so get you an idea what is the difference between uh the view source code and inspect element right yeah alert was removed uh, you can like uh actually alert was not removed i guess it is still available but it will not work i think so the accesses will not work uh, but you can use other tag as well hi uh, katanjimit yeah uh you can use another i will come to that part uh in uh, our accesses bypass one but i think so the time is up <laughs> we have stretched it along uh, we can continue this thing tomorrow maybe so check for normal payload okay but uh, let me quickly go through so this thing i think so hope so you are uh, able to understand what i have taught till now so do you have any questions okay if global attribute does not work do we have any alternative uh you need to find it out i am also i also got to know about this recently so i'm not well aware about that but uh, you hmm, i don't think so uh global attribute if that is been filtered out by the wav uh, you can use other i simply test for uh, manually actually uh so yeah yeah i will check it out actually i i uh, don't even use alert actually in my payload so i didn't saw any this i use uh, console dot log actually document dot domain so i actually use this payload uh, let me show you the working here if you go to screenshot you can see here uh, console you can see that uh, xss was getting executed okay so i actually use this i don't use alert but alert also actually works i guess in the browser still as you can see here it's working in the latest chromium browser uh, 
uh, it should be also working in the chrome as well like best one i haven't checked that video but i will check it out yeah you can see it already is still working uh, can you share your payload use for accesses bug hunting uh yeah heck uh, i will share that with uh, you tomorrow no means i don't use any special payload i just uh, as i told i simply follow this uh, methodology first i will uh, use my beacon i have other beacon actually this is not my beacon i made myself uh, my own beacon xss beacon uh, but you can get creative with that and use that then i simply type for any uh, html <coughs> tags which are allowed <coughs> I simply try for any html tags which are allowed and i also check for uh, characters which are getting sanitized or uh, other so that is uh, then i simply try script okay uh, then i simply try the script one if script doesn't work i try svg if svg doesn't work i try image source payloads and you can actually go to uh, the ports figure checklist for the for the excesses <coughs> cheat sheet you can get lots of payloads from here according to your need we will also use this tomorrow i guess okay so as you can see here this is id global attribute as we saw in that global attribute and excesses obviously it is not uh, an uh, uh, tag uh, valid html tag and id actually i think so it requires something other as well like tab index one and then the our uh, payload uh, our event handler and then our payload and then the exiting tag so it actually works in uh, the edge browser only okay <clears throat> so i think so now you will get a quite understanding uh, what the payload actually does okay so does don't simply blindly put the payload check what that payload actually means and uh, uh, make your own payloads okay i think so uh, we have covered but i will uh, start tomorrow's topic or maybe to uh, next stream's topic with uh, building payloads okay this was a simple workflow which i was wanted to share with you but there is some advanced one too which i will share in the next stream okay so that uh, next team we will cover uh, maybe payload building okay we will uh, learn how to build our payload uh, then uh, we will check uh, how to uh, bypass the waf and uh, that should i think so cover up lots of thing in that stream so see you in the next stream hopeful it was uh, very uh, informative i think so uh, you can ask me question just unmute yourself and you can talk with me right now it is recorded so don't worry about that <laughs> and sorry guys next time we will do it on gmeet only okay uh, sorry for the interruption We were just switching from platform to platform. <laughs> uh, any questions up till now? Do we have any questions? It was very simple, I know, but hopefully you might got something new to know. And next time, next time we will discuss about uh, payload building and uh, accesses WAF bypass. So means WAF bypass general. Uh, what uh, what's hackventor extension used for it is used you will see that in action uh, in the next stream so hackventor is simply used for uh, different encoding and decoding in the pop uh, for example here if i put uh, let's say something uh, access access let's say accesses blah blah okay uh, then I can simply uh, base 32 it so this is my base 32 value I can 
simply use base 64 it will give me base 64 so it uh, you can say uh, decoder but on steroid okay hackventer has a lot of uh, things for building excess payloads and all those things okay see ya uh, i should be stopping the presentation now uh, do you have any questions i will be uh, in the stream till the end so you can leave maybe now or if you have any questions you can ask i will share the stream modes in the discord as well katan when could be the next streaming Can you hear me? Oh, your voice is uh, very low, I guess. Uh, so when can you expect the next streaming? Uh, next stream, oh. I'm not sure. Uh, okay. Maybe after two, three days. Okay, well, it will be updated in the Twitter, right? In your handle. Yeah, yeah, I will, I will update it on Twitter. Sure. Okay, cool. And Discord as well, so don't worry about it. Okay, sure. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Thanks, Kadan, for the stream. Yeah, thank you, Abhijit. <laughs> thank you for uh, 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 telling that recording was not on. <laughs> I was not uh, aware about it. <laughs>